that the Sotapanna is coming back seven lifetimes, Sakadagami, one lifetime. But then let's see what is turning up. If you have the Anguttu Nikaya, um, we put the page numbers here for you. And um, this first one is called uh, Autumn 94, number three. If you, the gist of this small uh, sutta is if you attain Sotapanna or Sakadagami and you did this through practicing the jhanas, then you based on the suttas, you will be reborn in the pure abodes like an anagami. This is very interesting. Okay. You will not return to any lower realm and attain Nibbana from that realm and subsequently get off the wheel. Those noble disciples that have the attainment of Sotapanna or Sakadagami through the jhana practice, they are called jhana anagami and jhan jhana nagamita. So one is the male and one is the female. Pretty interesting. And in also the next part is on page 1541 in the Nikaya. This is Bhikkhu Bodhi's translation. Um, the deed born body, it's called. Number 219, number nine. Further proof is that if you attain Sotapanna or Sakadagami, in this sutta is also telling you, and you did this through the jhanas, then you will be reborn in pure abodes like an anagami. And it's the same paragraph actually as the other one. It explains to you that you will not return to any lower realm and attain Nibbana from that realm and get off the wheel. Those noble disciples that gained the attainment of Sotapanna and Sakadagami through the jhana practice are called the same jhana, jhana anagami or jhana anagamita per Bhikkhu Bodhi's notes from the commentaries. This sutta also, it explains that once you die from the human realm with these attainments, that your wholesome karma cannot follow you because your unwholesome karma, I'm sorry, your unwholesome karma cannot follow you because you will never return to this realm where it can come to fruition. In the human realm, it can come to fruition and burn off. Okay. Next one, partial quote regarding never returner status of Sotapanna or Sakadagami, the noble disciple who has attained the jhanas understands that when the liberation of mind by loving kindness has been developed in this way, it leads to non-returning. For a wise monk here, who does not penetrate to a further liberation. That's a jhana anagamita. That, that was a case of a female. Now, next part, attaining jhana one time and you will be reborn in high heaven realm. And Guter Nikaya, same thing, page 507. This is about loving kindness. So this is a lot about our practice. We were talking about it at the last talk in our retreat and talking about the, some other verifications. If you attain jhana during your life, you will be locked in to rebirth in a Brahma Loka. Now, listen for some commentary about this sutta. The most important idea in backing up our teacher's teaching, that is, 
if you practice to jhana in using the tranquil wisdom insight meditation and you experienced any jhana level, then you would automatically be reborn in the highest jhana realm corresponding to what you practiced and attained. For example, if only first jhana, then rebirth in the first jhana realm. Rebirth is very pleasant and it is one eon long. I'll explain the time to you in a little while. And second jhana, etc. That's for an eon long in the different levels. And then the sutta below here, it, this goes uh, on for all of the jhanas in the same way, but here is the first part. Now, some of this is coming from Sutta Central translation. It's not as good uh, at all, but David really liked to go to change a little bit of the text to Bhikkhu Bodhi's text, which is much clearer to understand. So I want to make the point that many people think that to be reborn in a Brahma Loka means that you have to be in that jhana at the moment of your death. That appears not to be the case. Luckily for us, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. You only need to be able to experience through a normal sitting that you might do with your practice or two or three as you need that you have been into the first jhana a few times and be able to get back to it again. Then you essentially have locked it in. And only if you commit any of the five heinous crimes, such as killing an arahant, killing your mother, killing your father, causing a schism in the Mahasangha, wounding a Buddha, then you would definitely be reborn into that very pleasant first jhana realm, no matter what trouble you may have been in, even lots of precept breaking previously, you would still have a happy life, a good life. So then the next one is Anguttara Nikaya, the book four. In the book four, uh, this is about goodwill. Monks, it says, there are these four types of individuals to be found existing in the world. Which four? There is the case where an individual keeps pervading the first direction as well as the second direction, the third and the fourth direction with an awareness imbued with loving kindness or metta. Sound familiar, huh? Because if you're practicing to the level of your directions, this is what's happening. Thus, he keeps pervading above, below, and all around, everywhere and in every respect the all-encompassing cosmos with an awareness imbued with goodwill, abundant, expansive, immeasurable, free from hostility, free from ill will. He savors that, longs for that, finds satisfaction through that, staying there, fixed on that, dwelling there often, not falling away from that, easily able to return to that jhana. Remember, we taught you how to start to practice determinations. And when you're practicing every day, your, your mind is listening and learning to communicate with you and learn that you want to stay in the jhana, it gets easier and easier. 
Then when he dies, he reappears in conjunction with the devas of Brahma's retinue. First jhana realm. This is above the deva realm. The devas of the Brahma retinue. Monks, they have a lifespan of an eon. Again, I'll show you the times for that in just a few minutes. Now, this gets a little strange. Listen to this one. This is very interesting. A run of the mill worldling, meaning an untrained person, having stayed there, having used up all the lifespan of those devas, goes to hell, to an animal womb, to the state of hungry shades, hungry ghosts. But a disciple of the Blessed One, and below, it is always saying noble disciple means Sotapanna or Sakadagami. Having stayed there, having used up all the lifespan of those devas, that person is unbound, attains final Nibbana right in the state of being. This, monks, is the difference. This is the distinction. This is the distinguishing factor between an educated disciple of the noble ones, those having attained Nibbana at least once, and an edu uneducated run-of-the-mill person when there is a destination, a reappearing. You see, that's what they're trying to say that, you know? And then, now you ask, but what if I don't attain Nibbana? And the stream entry, the Sodapana, in this lifetime, will I fall into hell? Well, it's harder to say. My opinion is based on the previous Sutta 125 above, which is Anguttara Nikaya 124 book of force. You can find it on page 507. This shows that if you are doing the Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation Jhana, practice properly, then actually you may attain Nibbana right there, or as the Sutta 124 says, that you will attain Nibbana from the pure abodes. So no worries. Just like the Anagami track, same thing, Anagami path. But the sutta may really mean that if you are doing concentration jhana, absorption practice, that you may well fall into the hell realms after a very nice period of time in the Brahma Lokas. <laughs> My two cents, or David's two cents in this case, is I don't know, but if you read, um, Lee Bracington has a book who, when he was teaching right concentration, um, about right concentration, and he says in his book, he explains that the concentration jhana practice, you can experience, still experience in the concentration jhana practice, practice you can still experience panic and stress and physical issues and downright disassociation. So that's telling us really, telling me, telling David, telling all of us that truly the concentration practice, if it is hard, if it is pressured on the brain at all, and it is suppressing something such as subduing or uh, suppressing or subduing the hindrances, and it creates a stress in the mind. And this may be why it may only keep you, um, keep you up, keep you feeling uh, high or your mind very light for so long. And then the hindrances come back double time. After retreat, some people have uh, said 
how they experience when I try to stop the hindrance, then when life comes and the same hindrance comes up, they double down on you and they come back harder than they came before. And we have talked about this with the hindrance management. Now, a Sri Lankan student who came to visit Damasuka once for a retreat agreed with us and quoted a sutta reference, but we're not sure which one it was, but there's a whole story about this where the Buddha is asked uh, about a stream of ants walking on the ground. And he says to the person who asked that they have fallen from the Brahma Loka and they had not gotten off the wheel and attained Nibbana. And he says, this is an admonishment to Sariputta who had gotten someone into the high enough insights to get them into a heavenly realm through his speaking to them, but not gotten them to the knowledge of Nibbana. Now, if you only get some jhanas, then eventually that karma runs out and it and uh, runs out and it and it runs out completely and then not just a little bit at a time. It happens very suddenly. They're saying after you live the entire life of a deva in a Brahma Loka, okay, in, in that level, suddenly you drop and it's a long way. <laughs> it was we were looking at the chart today, how many sections you fall through. And all of a sudden, it's like you go to bed and you wake up, you're sleeping in a palace, and then you wake up and you're an ant. And it happens just very quickly. And it, the above example um, could be a student that did not attain any jhanas, but the only was listening to Sariputta talk. And through their listening to him, their mind was elevated enough uh, to get into a Brahma Loka just by through hearing the sutta, but it doesn't save them from that. So this can actually happen. You can fall all the way down and then get caught in the in those lower realms are many, many, many long, 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 long time <laughs> to come back. And these talking about the times involved in this, um, in our discussion earlier uh, in this retreat, we were talking, these times are impossible to fathom. Our minds can't get a hold of them because you're talking, um, I don't know, 576 million years in one level because you have celestial years and you have the Mahakapa is an e one eon, but then you look at celestial years inside that Mahakapa measurement, very, 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 very big, how many human years are compared to it. Very, very low. So this next one is talking about the imperturbable. This is the highest level of, uh, the highest level of equanimity. When you are reborn in the formless realms after practicing jhana, absorption meditation, your next rebirth may end up being hell not the human or deva realm, but Sotapanas and Sakandagamis, the noble disciples are reborn into jhana realm and remain there until they attain Ibana. There's no return, okay? It's the untrained mind that is, and what it has to do with this one and discussing this last one up here, is touching an important subject that we talked about uh, here in, in this retreat somewhat. We had some questions and we talked about it uh, because um, you cannot have the same kind of progress and, and shift into, um, you know, into another lifetime. You cannot have the same progress is what these are pointing out. If you are not having a meditation training and a Dhamma development training at the same time, side by side like this. You've heard me maybe talk about this before. It has to be a, uh, you know, a parallel training that's occurring to have the things happen as the Buddha is explaining. So in this one, 
the Buddha explains that a person who has attained the immaterial jhanas is indeed reborn in a jhana realm or Brahma Loka that corresponds to the jhana that they attained. So, however, this worldly, a worldly person who practices jhana, and I would guess that it's talking about concentration and absorption jhana that is attained outside or wrongly practiced inside of Buddhism, outside or inside of Buddhism, it doesn't matter, will fall from the corresponding Brahma Loka realm directly past the Deva and the human realms directly to the animal or the hell realms at the very bottom. It's a big chart and goes to the very bottom. So this is a shocking kind of revelation because one would think logically that one would gracefully fall from where you were living out your lifetime in the Brahma Loka, then you would simply fall from there uh, once the jhana uh, karma result is used up there to the next lower realm as explained in the Abhidhamma. Okay, but this is not the case. As the suttas clearly are saying here, the definition of the instructed noble one may be a sotapanna or sakadagami, or it may be one who correctly practices the jhanas as taught by the Buddha. He's hearing the Dhamma happening in, in line, side by side. When he's practicing his meditation, he's learning his Dhamma comprehension. And this aligns you with uh, the same thing as when we are talking about the um, progress of your meditation and talking about um, um, how you measure your progress. And the Buddha was not measuring by just your meditation. He was measuring by the success in mechanical or operational management of your meditation and the comprehension of your Dhamma instruction combined. Yeah. And so this is, this is verifying that. Monks, there are three types of persons found in the world. Here, monks, with the attainment of the base of infinite space, this person relishes it and finds satisfaction. In it. If he is firm in his practice and he has not lost it when he dies, he is reborn in companionship with the devas of the infinite space. And there's a realm for infinite space. There's a realm for each one of the jhana levels. There's a jhana, uh, there's a three realms for the first jhana, three realms for the second jhana, three realms for the third jhana. People who have their abhidhamma, you need to get me straight. <laughs> but there's three. And when you're practicing through loving kindness, and you're in the first jhana, you end up in the highest, the one, the higher, the highest one of the Brahma Lokas under the uh, in the list on the chart. So this worldling remains the, the okay, if he's firm in his practice, he has not lost it when he dies, he's reborn in companionship with the devas of the infinite space. The lifespan for him is 20,000 eons. 20,000 eons. And 20,000 eons comes out to something like 576 million regular years, earth years. Quite a while, quite a while. So this worldling remains there for all his life until he has completed the entire lifespan of the devas in that level. Then he goes down into hell to an animal realm or to a sphere of afflicted spirits. But the blessed ones, the noble ones, meaning um, the Sotapan and Sakadagami disciples, um, remain there all of their life. And when they are, have completed their entire lifespan of the devas in the level where they landed, then they attain Nibbana in the very same state of existence, that very same state. And this is the difference between the instructed noble one's disciple 
and the uninstructed worldling that exists in the Buddha dispensation. So now that I've totally confused you, <laughs> you take a look at this and um, I might need to go and get the chart because I'm not, not really terrifically good at this because I'm not somebody who spends a lot of time on timelines, you know. But first you need to ask, you need to tell me if you have any questions about this idea. Because I know it sounds crazy when you thought, well, we have Sotapanna, Sotapanna fruition, Sakanagami, Sakanagami fruition. Then we have anagami, and anagami was non-return, and arahant was non-return, you see? Now I'm blowing that boat out of the water, which is usually done for conversation. So you need to, if you have a question, you can ask me. No, no, actually, we're not going to play right now. Actually, the dog thinks he has the answer. Just a minute. You have to get down. But come on, stop. Oh, you want to go out of here? You want to go out? I'll let you go out. Stop. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Here. Okay. I am sorry. I had to go because dog is not understanding. <laughs> okay. So does anybody have a question other than what in the world did you just say? <laughs> Nobody has a question. None? Do you want to try to see the chart? You know, Bunty, um, do you have one of the charts in your files? Do you have one in the files anywhere? I'm searching for, David had a P PDF uh, which he had shared. So I'm searching for that. I'm gonna, um, let me look in my phone. I might have, I don't think I took it out of here. It's a color picture of the, chart, but I, I, if I can figure out how to send it to you, you could, um, we could put it up, I think. If I could send yes. it over to you. Yes, yes, I can. But let me just see if I can locate it. Okay, let's see if I can find it. I used to have one that I kept in my in my phone. If I can figure out how to send that to you. Only other way I have one I have one up on the um on the board for the retreat, but I don't know how I can help them to see it, you know. Let's see what I find. Boy, this is this is a long time ago. Let's see. Wait a second. Ah, I got it. All right. Magic. Here we go. Let's see. Because this is the same chart as I was teaching them on. So I'll send this to you. And see if you can help me get it up. I found David's uh, chart also. Well, this is the same chart, but this one's colored. Okay. So it makes it, easy. it makes it a little easier to see. Uh, um, so what uh, exactly you, uh, which page do you want? Wait a second. Here, this, is, this is the same one as I was teaching off of. Um, 
and we can we can maybe I don't know if you can make it bigger if I put it up, but I can try to point out to you what it is. Mm -hmm. okay. Here it comes. I, oh, I sent it to your phone. Does that help you? I'm sorry. No, no problem. I can I can download it. Okay. okay. So the interesting part of it, let me, I'll show them the years first, okay? Try to. Okay. So I'm going to take you back to the whiteboard now, and I'm going to try to explain to you um, Mahakalpa and a Kalpa, uh, a Mahakalpa and an, an Eon. Just okay, a I, I share this with uh, them on the WhatsApp group. And over here also I can share it. Is there a way I can put it on the whiteboard? Uh, yeah, not on the whiteboard. I can share this image or uh, you can use the whiteboard. You can, we cannot use it uh, both. First, I'll share it with the uh, chat group. I can't figure out how to get the whiteboard. Always oh, fun. All right, let's see. I can, I can take you out of, oh, I need to go back to school. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out how to. Okay, now I have a whiteboard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, no, I turned it off again. What am I doing wrong? Okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, you have that. It, right. I got it. Okay, so here's the thing. What you have on the chart, and you can help me with this, Bunty, but you have an MK, and that's a Maha, um, Mahakalpa. Okay, so you have an MK. And just when you're thinking about all of this, you know, this is a, um, a um, wait a minute, I need my pen, it's much easier. <laughs> okay, um, this is a, a, a Maha Kalpa, K-A, Kalpa. Then what you have is you got a C-Y, a celestial year. And a celestial year, can you see on the chart what one celestial year equals? Bonte? One second. Uh, one celestial year. One second. Yeah, look down near the bottom of the chart and go from there backwards, and you can figure okay. out how much one celestial year is because they're mentioning them there. So I'll show you how a maha culpa works. Each, uh, each, uh, this thing, uh, uh, re, uh, means uh, Deva Loka has a different uh, 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 lifespan. So that has been explained uh, by uh, David uh, more uh, kind of in detail. No, he didn't do it in this document. I just need Not to know the, first, just yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. what a celestial year equals in human years. Okay, one second. I'll just. Uh, I'm just going over there. Wonder if I can actually take the computer and go out to the board. I still have it hung on the board. So maybe I can do that with you. If I can figure out how to do it. Isn't that fun? There, I took you off. Now, I'm going to... Uh, see, uh, the first is Chatu Maharajika. Uh, that lifespan is Deva years is 500 years of Deva. Human years per uh, Deva day is 50. And lifespan as per human years is 9 million. Tavatimsa is 1,000 years lifespan. 
Yeah, but we're not but we're not talking about that's not what we were doing. Wait a second. Jeez. I've got I'm taking you for a trip in the cootie here. Just a second. Turn on all the lights. Now we're gonna go over here. And um there's no way that I can turn. I, I just shared this once again. Okay, so what I'm seeing is you got a Mahakalpa and you have a celestial oh, yeah. years. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in in the first jhana. You have three planes of the Brahma Lokas, and if you sit in a jhana one time in your life, you can end up in the realm. As for the jhanas, as for the jhanas, he has also mentioned first jhana, second jhana, third jhana. Okay, so the first jhana, you would end up in the, the, one third the highest the one, in the highest one. And that looks like that's the lowest one. You great brown and calculus. Mm, that's not telling me in terms of the what I was talking about. Um, in the Tao of Timza, one thousand. One world cycle is Mahakapa. One world cycle is Mahakapa. I want everybody to go, oh, wow. Are you ready? The Tawa Timza heaven, 1,000 celestial years equals 36 million human years. <laughs> now, what I want to show you guys is, um, uh, let me go back to the whiteboard a second. Over here, uh, here it is showing oh. in human years also. Tawa yeah. Timza is 36, 36 million years. Yama is 144 million years. Right. Sita. Yeah. Now, so if you're only sitting in the first jhana, okay, you you end up in this Brahma Loka that is the realm of the great Brahma. That's the highest one. Okay. And then when you fall, when you use up that time and you fall into the hell realms, it's a big fall because you fall all the way on the chart down through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight levels, nine levels, 10 levels to get into the house. And David was saying that, you know, uh, actually you think of it, maybe we'll slip down one or two like that, but it's not like that. You drop from being in this Brahma Loka that's way high up on the chart. Did you show him the chart? Can you show him the, col the color chart that I had? Uh, yeah, color chart. Okay, one second. I have that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, the color chart is there. I'm standing in front of the color chart that we were using for the retreat. That's why I'm asking you. One. Yeah, so first, Jana. Um, yeah, he has it like the great Brahma is actually the highest one and the, the on the chart. But can you put the color chart up? This is the color chart. Can you see it on the screen? I can see a white chart with green sides and it's nothing to do with the chart I'm standing in front of. I sent you the color chart. In yeah, the uh, uh, can anybody, uh, means uh, this is the chart uh, which is there, uh, which has all uh, different colors. Purple, That's the one. Uh, I sent it to you. And you're in, no. no. Can I have the whiteboard back? Okay, then uh, you have to uh, kind of go. Uh, now you have to take. Uh, Got it. Sharing. Got it. Okay. Okay. So what I was trying to show you was what is this Maha Kalpa? Okay. So here's the universe, the birth of the universe, guys. Ready? There it is. <laughs> the birth of the universe. All right. So now this is, starts from here and it goes like this, like one, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it wiggle, but this is one Kalpa. Okay. And this is one culpa expanding, expansion, right? Okay. And um, then what happens is over here, you rest. So you rest for the same period of time as you went from the, to, to expand the universe. And the only time anybody is alive or living is during the expansion, during that culpa. And then the next thing that happens is you come back, you have the contraction of the universe and the contraction and everything goes crazy and nobody can live there, okay? Uh, nobody can live on any of the planets. It's not, nothing's alive during the contraction period. 
The contraction period is the same length as time as the expansion. And this piece here, the, this one here, the number two is the same length of time as the expansion. They are equal to four equal times. And so when you come back over here, we can say this one is the, the um, expansion and it's gonna last as long as the first culpa. And then the third culpa is here, contraction down like that direction back down till it's just a piece again. But when it gets to be there, this piece is resting. So usually when they count, they count one expansion, two rest, three contraction, four, then you're down there at resting again. It's like a great big animal is out there and he's breathing, you know? It's like taking a breath and holding it for an equal amount of time as your breath, then expanding your breath, you see, contracting and breathing like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really crazy, but it's amazing. <laughs> and um, so what they're saying to us, that's interesting to me is that in science, at the Science Institute, when after studying about the Buddhist teachings and everything, I took the kids to, uh, you know, to the Science Institute and they had discovered all this. And I like that a lot. And um, I like that a lot. <laughs> He's trying to eat the new rugs. <laughs> this is really funny. So you get a good view of, um, I don't know if you can see, I don't even know if you can see this, but this is our little, our little, you know, it's no good. I can't take you around here and show this to you. So that's a Mahakalpa and the celestial year, one celestial year, we would have to say you divide, go ahead, Bunty, divide uh, 576 million years, divide that by, is that right? No. Yeah. Okay. 576 million years, divide that by 4,000. What do you get? 0.144, that is uh, 144,000. 144,000 human years for one celestial year. Is that right? Roughly something like that. Okay. Some, uh, yeah, I think this maths, uh, we are not so uh, strong with. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the next subject tonight if nobody has any questions, but I wish somebody would have a question, but I know how mind bending this is. It's like, I just told you that you can't study your favorite subject in college. And now you have to study astronomy and your mind is going like, ah, you know, because of the size of everything that we're talking about here. And, um, and then you say also, I, I also went around with what does this matter to me since I am not going there, you see, that's an issue too. Yes, that is. <laughs> so these things go around and round in your head because your consciousness, when your body is gone, your consciousness moves on into its pool of consciousness and everything. And the lasting part of the consciousness travels through a pool of intelligence source of consciousness in the universe. My favorite thing in my lifetime was finding out that there is no such thing as a vacuum. I love it. And they said that space was a vacuum, cold and scary and a killer and everything else. Now they're saying that space is not empty and space, space is not a vacuum. That there's, when you talk to them at MIT, what is there? They'll say something intelligent and that's all they'll say. No one knows what they mean when they say that, but it's kind of interesting. So. <laughs> So this is what happens. So this is the first part of um, this, uh, and it's actually almost the end of an hour. But, but the other thing I was thinking about that you might be interested in learning, I would like to get some feedback from you all. Are you interested in learning something about the lives of the different people that lived in the Buddhist period, especially who are these people? Who was, you know, those little tiny stories that are behind everything that we tell you about in the suttas. So I'm basically talking about, I'll tell you who, um, who, were so, who are these um, 
people who became the ones that stand out in the suttas, such as the Kasapa brothers, and then um, you have the King, so uh, King Sahodana was the father, and Yasodra was the mother. And do you know Rahula was the son? But do you know about the story behind his relatives um, who became the, the Arahats, who ended up becoming the monks and a lot of the Arahats? And that gets interesting. First, we have Nanda, then we have Ananda, and we learn a few things about their background. And if you're interested in doing this, I can put together a composite. So you begin to learn some of these because they're really fun to know who is mm, Pajapati Godami. I better learn who that is because they're making a film and they want me to be the voice for her. So, uh. <laughs> so this is kind of fun. I, I was hoping I could do another one of those fish things for Walt Disney, but this will do. <laughs> so I've got to be, um, then we have Devudatta. He was a problem. Who was he? Anathapindika. Um, Anathapind is a great character. Risaka, who was she? And, you know, a lot of times people in Asia know a lot of these stories, but then a lot of people don't. Isaka has a lot. King Bimbisara, who was he? How was he important? King Pasanadi. We've heard about King Pasanadi. Remember, he was um, in the, uh, the um, botanical garden. We, we heard about him in the botanical He did several things. He had a rough time. Bunty, isn't he had a rough time because his son killed him, right? Bimbisa, that right? I think Bimbisa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his uh, son. Yeah, that was a rough time. And then you hear about the Buddhist ministry from a different angle, and you hear about some of the people like Angulimala, and you hear about him, and you, be, you get to hear about, um, let me go to the front, you get to hear about, um, right? You do. I know. Sorry, Pucha, Mogolana. Who are these people? Who was Kohita? Why did they always go to him? Yeah, and people are interested in those topics. Uh, uh, so yeah. do you want to do it one by one uh, in the coming weeks? I think we do this for a while. I think it would be fun. Yeah, that's a good thing. You can and have Terigata and uh, yeah. the Teragata is there. Uh, you can use uh, yeah. those. Uh, that's resources. right. Yes. That's yeah. in there. So this is really good because either Bhante or I can help you with this uh, when we do these classes on Wednesday nights. And this is going to be fun. But I know how much I really like learning about this because you find out in this uh, also about what was the Buddha's daily routine? What did he do every day? There's wonderful topics in this. And then about there's a whole section on his ministry and uh, King Pasanati's in here. I knew he was. Okay. So you get a lot of a lot of information about um, questions about rebirth, questions about karma, lots of stuff that we didn't have before. We may have mentioned some things about karma, but I don't like to get people too psyched up about karma <laughs> uh, because if you start thinking about karma, the one thing the Buddha was telling us, if you start asking questions about karma, well. You're not going to sit in meditation and you're not going to get there because you're going to get so perplexed with the, the, the topic. It kind of drives you crazy. It's time to let go of it and to look at this. So the final part of this, just let me say a couple of things. You know, they did really good in this retreat. It was a tiny place that we have and we had six participants. And they uh, use this kuti. If you've ever visited this kuti, which I also call the tiny temple, <laughs> you know, it has a walking stretch of about 30 feet that you can walk back and forth on. It has seating for about six to eight people in a retreat. That's all. And we do some pretty heavy stuff because we teach in the morning and teach at night. And then they are sitting for about four or five hours a day. They go home and they're expected to sit uh, try to sit, the sitting and walking for four, for about four and a half, five hours a day. And when they go home, they're expected uh, to sit again before they go to bed. And then they had some requirements, like some assignments, like please get up and sit from two to three o'clock in the morning so that you can discover what it was like when in the second, uh, that third watch of the night, 
there when there's no consciousness active around you at all around you everybody around you is asleep if you're in an apartment complex this is great everybody's asleep it's dead air <laughs> you sit and it's very very quiet and they did i would say spectacularly well in this um in this uh practice the way we did it and we we had the monk because the monks were here and because this is a range retreat they're eating from their bowls and women came and served them and i'm going to put some pictures up so every day the women came and they they served the three monks and they served me and um it was a lovely arrangement i found out that i'm an elder <laughs> so because i'm an elder they can pay respect to me and be respectful to me as a teacher but if I was younger, none probably would be a little difficult. But, and actually I told them if they don't behave, I'll grow my hair out and it's almost white now. So that don't really scare them <laughs> and they'll have to listen. They were so good. They had so much uh, fun in the morning they would arrive. And of course this dog is here. The puppy that was gonna sweet little puppy that was gonna be a small dog is now almost 35 pounds. <laughs> So this is getting interesting. And we had to carry the dog next door to Shashi's uh, father's house to take care of the dog for the day. He was the doggy sitter, you know? And, and actually by the time we finish, I don't know, it's gonna be interesting to see what the dog does tomorrow morning. When we don't do this routine after doing it for 10 days straight, where the dog gets removed from here and put next door for the day and then has to come home at night. And, then I'm leaving on Friday. So, but the dog is pretty well adjusted, you know? <laughs> and um, now we're going to be doing some exciting things. So now what's happening? I talked to you about this for just a couple of minutes and then we're gonna let you go. Um, what's cooking in the pot right now is that I will go from, uh, go here from where I am in Ulasnagar and I will go to Pune the end of this week to a Catholic convent that is in Pune to teach uh, actually uh, 13 nuns and two supervisors and then a, a student. And then also another arrangement happened this week that during the retreat uh, because uh, Venerable Bodhimitra has decided to oversee uh, some parts of my training and, and work with me a little bit more closely. And so I'm, I've got one of the ladies who is a poly teacher who's working on her PhD. She's gonna start and she's gonna be a copy of for me. This is exciting to have a copy because I haven't had a copy before. And she'll be a copy means like a companion who will help me with everything, <laughs> with everything. So especially remembering schedules and getting here on time and stuff to do stuff and help me with arrangements, with printing. She's very skilled because she's been a teacher at the university and uh, for a good amount of time, uh, she is in a position where she's done printing and organizing and scheduling for people in the university. I need this very badly right now. I get cross-eyed trying to keep up with what I'm doing. She also can lay out, help with laying out books and help with some things that we need to have happen we just completed and honestly we did complete them this time we're going to print them now um, the uh, toolkit which will be given to people after retreat which is very well organized now and also it, that's a toolkit it's about 30 pages and then there's another one called the brahma viharas for everyone and that is a non-denominational booklet teaching you the brahma viharas as we're teaching it um, and the walking and the forgiveness is in that as well, so that you can take this and you can share it with people who are not Buddhist and give it to them. And, um, and that's uh, what's happening now. And then when I, I do a 10 day retreat with the nuns, and um, I like this a lot because I really like to talk about the alignment between Christianity and Buddhism um, and, and uh, have people really look at what we all have in common instead of what we are looking at what's different. So that's going to be fun. After the trip to um, Pune, I leave there and go back to, I think it's called Kandankar. Is, the, is this place called Kandankar, right? Is that right, Bunty? 
I'm almost ready. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Neural uh, is the biggest town. Neural is the closest um, place on the railroad that you stop the first stop from Mumbai when you're going towards Pune, I think. Is that right? And, it, and then uh, you get off there. Neural. Okay, Neural. And then 30 kilometers to this place that we are probably adopting. <laughs> and it's an agreement between two trusts that are dedicated to um, humanistic training of the mind and the heart. And it's our organization, the uh, Samatha Vipassana Trust. And then I don't know the name of his trust. Do you know it, Bhante? I can't remember. But, I am also you know. drawing a blank. Some Mad Madhyama Marg or something like that. Huh? Okay. Oh, no. his, yeah. Madhyama. Their organization is very large. And so they're going to help us to renovate Madhyama this. Just rolled, uh, what yeah, was yeah. it? So, no, the, uh, the, uh, the village is called Kondanpur. Kondanpur. Okay. Yeah, and the retreat center is called Madhyam Mark, and the trust okay. is called Jiva Dwipa Trust. Okay, I need you to make that announcement every time I need you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all right. We can, I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> and when I get there, this place is really going to be fun. We, I'll share this with you just a second. I have something you can look at that make you go crazy. Um, okay. Basically, this place is really fun. You know, I, I, I wasn't always a nun, but I wasn't always a drawing person either. But since I'm a nun, I'm getting better at drawing. So if you look at this, this will kind of make you go crazy. Can you see that? Okay. So you see in this picture, okay, you've got little circular cooties that are like this. Each one is a, is a, um, a habitat for three people, okay, each of these, and there's three for the women, and there are three for the men, and the, I'm sorry, well, three for the women and three for the men, I guess this is upside down, I might have it upside down, and this big circle over here, this is a dama hall with a beautiful dome on top, and inside, it, it can hold like up to 100 people or more. It's absolutely remarkable. But these retreats will be set up for a total of about, um, I think we figured at 26, 20, possibly 26 to 30. I'm going to turn this over because I think it's kind of backwards the way I'm looking at it there. It's better. Okay, so this, this part over here, this is where there's a kitchen in a two-story building here. And, and in there, there's also a, um, an upstairs for a men's dormitory for eight people in bunk beds and a brand new bathroom set up. And there'll be new bathrooms put in for these cooties. And there will be, um, when I go up there, we're gonna talk more about the renovation of how this is gonna go. But there's a, a building that is, let's see if I can find that other building. Where is it? Um, Right. I mean, it's here. I don't remember where it is. Okay, there's a building in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, we have two rooms we can build in there, one for a teacher, and I think one's going to be for a teacher and one's going to be for a classroom because we need a classroom where we can still be teaching online. And it doesn't have and there's a cottage there where I will go and stay whenever I'm teaching I will be there and I will probably be there more than I will be here because the air is going to be cleaner. <laughs> so that's probably one of the things that's going to help. So that, that is kind of the arrangement that's going on we're, we're preparing to fix this up they also told us they're planning on putting a um, where this building is here down here below it. They are going to build a building down here that is a long rectangle down here that's a two-story building that will have more facility in it. They've always thought about doing this and they're thinking they're going to do that also because I do want a library. Yes, I'm going to take a lot of books with me <laughs> and I'm going to be teaching from there. We're going to improve the satellite connection, but it's not bad. It's not bad right now. So this is all the adventure coming in front of us. And we're also looking at some other things to expand uh, everything that we're doing. So my big thing now is to tell you to stay tuned. I know there's somebody here. Let's see. Um, he was here, Sarab Beal. Hello. 
and he's working on a website for us. We're going to be working with him more now that we've got three books that we finished um, and we're looking at the indexes. Uh, uh, it's finished. It's essentially, it's almost finished also. So those things now we're trying to get, figure out the printing, figure that out. And people are looking at it. We're going to take 50 of the toolkit of the toolkits, I think, or the, no, I'm sorry, the Brahma, the Brahma Viharas for everyone. We're taking that one to, to run a test run with it, with the Catholic nuns good test. <laughs> See how it works. But I'm sure that they're going to relate very well to this. Anybody listening who is involved in Christianity should remember that what we're teaching follows very closely with um, Father Thomas Keating and the one that is a Catholic priest who's Re reignited the Christian centering prayer from the uh, very early period after um, the crucifixion. And they, they used to practice this prayer. And what we're doing is very close to Francis of Assisi. And so because of that, I think we're going to have a good time in this retreat that's coming up. Sounds like good people. They're all in their 30s and 40s becoming nuns, and they're all well-educated. So I'm excited really psyched. So that's what's going on, Bhante Dhamma What What do you think? I'm beginning to sound like the news. <laughs> Good. Uh, things will pick up more uh, as uh, this situation also improves. I think uh, things will kind of change. I had a call from Jaitwan uh, uh, Bansur. Mm -hmm. And he also was saying that he is organizing a retreat now uh, over there, and he wanted to uh, kind of inquire what is happening with us. Well, uh, it, just, uh, it can happen that we might be able to do a retreat at Jetwan. I was thinking about this during the time they're doing the re renovation until we can. Yeah, and I'm understanding the circular buildings, the circular ones take 15 days to renovate. I went in one that's completely renovated. So five of them are left and 15 days for doing that project, it, depending on how many workers they have, they know exactly what they want to do. And it looks really nice, the one that has been, has been redone. Very, very pleasing stucco inside, you know, with little shelves and, um, and you can put three bunks in very easily. It's very, very nice, very pleasing, yeah. And um, so, Jetwan is a possibility during the time we're doing renovation. That's possible. Yeah. And, uh, and other places are also possible. But um, I think this place is going to end up to be able to serve us. And I really, I, I, I have to tell you, honestly, unless there's another teacher working with me at the same time, going to be hard to do more than, uh, you know, 25 people and this place is going to be very good for the way we're teaching oh the the news is that the three monks are coming with us with me for the seven days over at um at the uh the, yes that's right the place <laughs> the new place the, the 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 that's it right yes the meditation center <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i'm really really tired. I just want you all to know that. <laughs> okay, so if you come over there to see it, I think you're going to like it a lot because it has lots of trails in it, you know, where you can walk and lanes and, and the monks are excited because they can come over and they can rake and they want they're ready to come over and rake and work and help with this and carry on with their program because they get up at four o'clock. <laughs> And they can have their program in the Dhamma Hall with what they do in the morning. And then I can get up and do what I do at five o'clock, <laughs> you know, because I told him I'm not, I don't think I'm willing to go back to that four o'clock thing. And I don't want to put that on people who are coming in for a retreat. I would keep it at five o'clock because I'd like everybody to feel fresh and relaxed and I know that you're not coming for a vacation when you come to a retreat, but I would like you to be, you know, fully there and feeling rested and happy when you go home. That's what we've always done at Damasuka. That's why Bhante took that hour back. And he actually, um, you get up at five and he didn't only do that. He gave you one hour of rest after lunch. So actually what you get is sleeping in our retreats. You get to go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night and get up at five 
for a 5.30 morning service. When you go through your day after lunch, you get one hour rest. And then you go to bed at 10 o'clock. So you see, you're getting eight hours, right? Is that 10, right? 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. There's seven, okay? And one more is eight hours. And that's unheard of, but we think it should be heard of. <laughs> so there you are, okay? So I'm gonna say the blessing and I hope to hear from you all here. If you're interested to come and help us at the place, you can always let us know and we'll figure out a way that you can come out to help because a lot of it is trimming trees around walking lanes and, um, you know, and we would be doing, I'll do Dhamma talks in the evening if people are there like want to do that sort of thing. It's not a problem, okay? So, may suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share the spirit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas, mighty power, share the merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. I got it.